Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of this tape is to utilize two orthodontic diagnostic techniques that you've studied, the mixed dentition analysis and the facial form analysis, and introduce some others in the demonstration of an orthodontic clinical examination. This is my friend Jeff who is nine and a half and a student here in Ann Arbor who is going to help me today with this examination. Uh, Jeff, I understand from your mom you're a sports fan, is that right? Yep. What do you, what do you like to play? Soccer, baseball, basketball, uh, football, Really? What position do you play in soccer? Center. Center, huh? Have you ever taken a boat ride or a raft? Yeah. You have? I heard something about a haircut that you did on your dog this weekend. What'd you, what happened there? Oh, uh, he was a sheep dog, and um, we cut him, and then when we were finished cutting him, he looked like a poodle. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, let's get busy and do the facial form analysis first. Now the first step in the facial form analysis is to put the patient uh, in the standard position. And the first part of that is to put Frankfurt horizontal parallel to the floor. Now, as you can see, Jeff is uh, of normal size, but these large chairs, it's very difficult to position the head with the head rest. So often you'll have to manipulate the child's head yourself. It's important that the chair be fully upright with the seat all the way forward. Okay, if I put Frankfurt horizontal here on the side of the face, we can see that it goes from the tragus of the ear down here to the lowermost point on the bony orbit. And I think I've just about got him right here. It's pretty close. The second line that we use in the facial form analysis is the Frankfurt, uh, or rather the Frankfurt horizontal, the nasion perpendicular. This is a line through nasion perpendicular to Frankfurt horizontal. Uh, when you're doing this analysis, it's because it's difficult uh, to check the facial contours of the facial bones and skeletal balance with both hands holding a tongue blade. At this point, we can change the orientation and put nasion perpendicular perpendicular to the floor, which is also should be parallel to Frankfurt horizontal. This will look something like this. Now palpating the four points, midfacial, maxillary alveolar, mandibular alveolar, and chin point can be done with the tips of the fingers. Again, attempting to keep this nasion perpendicular line perpendicular to the floor. We can feel that midfacial here is almost right on Jeff, even with the ala of the nose. Maxillar alveolar is slightly in front. Mandibular alveolar pretty much on the line or maybe a little bit posteriorly. And his chin point is almost right on the line. This type of relationship defines a, a rather straight face for someone of Jeff's age. The next part of the facial form from the lateral view is to assess the angle between Frankfurt horizontal, again placing it in this position, and the lower border of the mandible. Now this angle in Jeff's case is 
relatively moderate, maybe 25 to 30 degrees, again showing a relatively straight face. Moving, moving along with the fascia form analysis from the frontal view, the first step is again to make sure the face is in the standard position, Frankfurt horizontal, again parallel to the floor, and to place mid-sagittal plane or line in the middle of the face. Now in Jeff's case, we try to find about where the middle of nasion would be, right through the anterior nasal spine. And if we look at it in this relationship, we can see that Jeff has a relatively symmetrical face. Chin point maybe being off just a little bit over to his right. Another way to assess uh, balance is to, can you open for me a second, Jeff? And just bite on that stick back posteriorly. There we go. You can see here that this, the angle of the occlusal plane is almost perfectly perpendicular to mid-sagittal. Therefore, again, Jeff has a, a relatively symmetrical face. Okay, Jeff, you can let go of that now. Another thing that can be done in this position is to assess the relative, from an inferior view, the relative symmetry of the mandible. This is a little difficult to do sometimes, but uh, luckily nine and a half year, year old children are usually flexible enough to do it. Jeff, can you sit right forward for me once? That's right. Now tip your head right back and look right up at the ceiling. That's right. Now if you sit right back like that and move your head, we're trying here to have Frankfurt horizontal perpendicular to the floor. In that position, I can put a point of a finger on the gonial angle and tell if one gonial angle is more inferior, posterior, wider than the other. I can put chin point on and see how it relates, again, to mid-sagittal. In Jeff's case, quite symmetrical. Okay, Jeff, you can sit up again. In summary, then, uh, Jeff has a relatively well-balanced facial skeleton. No significant asymmetries. Before beginning the dental assessment, obviously it's wise to briefly examine the patient's oral cavity and make sure there are no lesions or any other problems. Although it seems to be an easy step, identifying the teeth can sometimes be a problem. It's important to know your dental anatomy and make a distinct uh, difference between primary and permanent teeth. Beginning on Jeff's upper right, you can see way back there a six, then an E, D, C, and turning here a little bit, a two, a one, across the midline, another one, there's no lateral incisor, two. And going on the other side, there's a C, a D, and way back there, a six. In the lower on the left, a six. There's an E, a little bit below the level of occlusion, then a D, a C. And coming around again, lateral incisor, two is a little bit lingual, then a one, a central. Moving across the midline, another one, a slightly rotated two, again turning here, you can see a, a C, D, E, and a six. Now bite together again in your back teeth, Jeff. Turning to the side, we can see that the occlusion is class one, mesiobuccal cusp of the upper first molar is occluding very close to the buccal groove of the lower first molar. Next, assessing from a lateral view, the overjet and overbite. One can see that, yeah, you can bite right together, Jeff. That's good. Jeff has a rather average amount of overbite. There is a way to measure this with a bully gauge. 
Uh, Jeff, can you hold these for just a second? That's right, and turn your hands way back. One can use the back of the bully gauge in this manner, sliding forward. To measure over jet, one can place the handle end of the bully gauge against the lower central incisor and sliding the other part of the bully gauge forward to contact the labial of the upper central incisor. One can read off the vernier scale the amount of overjet. In Jeff's case, it's a little less than four millimeters. Beginning the mixed dentition analysis, let me take these for you, Jeff. As you've seen, Jeff is missing a lateral incisor in the upper left quadrant. So we won't be able to do the analysis in that quadrant. Demonstrating one quadrant, let's do the lower right. Open just a little bit, Jeff. Now, again, measuring it, the two most, the widest mesial distal width, we're getting six millimeters for the central, rather wide lateral, 6.8. To do the analysis, we know that we want to align those incisors more or less in our mind. So we put 12.8 on the scale, measure over. This is the point where the distal of the lateral incisor would be if it were well aligned. Then measure from that point back to the mesial of the first permanent molar. and we get 22.8. As you can see from your sheet, the prediction in that quadrant is 23.9. 22.8 leaves Jeff with about a millimeter, a little more, of crowding in that quadrant as we kind of suspected. The next part of the examination is the functional analysis. We know that Jeff has no cross bites but we want to place them in centric relation and look for functional shifts. Open just a little bit, Jeff. Now relax your lower jaw. That's it, just relax. Don't open quite so wide. Now let me close you and tap your teeth. Okay, open just a little bit. There we go. Now squeeze. Now you can see he has almost no slide at all. Checking for oral habits is always important, but not particularly so for Jeff because he doesn't have an open bite. Even if he did have an oral habit, apparently it's not significant enough to be causing any problem. Oral habits can be lips, tongues, fingers, and again, almost anything. To check tongue function, one can hold your thumb on the lower lip and hold the lower lip down. Now, Jeff, can you swallow once for me? Now. Difficult to see that, but I can feel Jeff's thyroid cartilage rise as he swallows. You notice no constriction of the upper lip. This is a, a normal swallow. Going into the summary then, uh, skeletally, Jeff has a normal facial skeleton, well balanced. Dentally, mild crowding, class one occlusion, no anomalies or cross bites, but a missing upper left lateral incisor. Along with that missing tooth is a significant midline shift toward the left, and as we know, we decided it was a maxillary problem. Functionally, there are no severe prematurities or cross bites, and no open bites and no effects of oral habits. This is a panoramic film taken of Jeff a few months ago. And as you can see, it does confirm our suspicions about the lateral incisor. It is congenitally missing, and that's why it's not present in her orally. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. 
For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.